uh, thanks uh, Melissa for the intro. Uh, good afternoon everyone, my name is Chun Di Liu. Uh, I obtained my master's degrees from the MSAC program at the University of Toronto. Uh, currently, I'm a machine learning scientist at Layer 6, uh, where I mainly work on computer vision and uh, machine learning applications in capital markets. Uh, for those who don't know much about us, Layer 6 was a Toronto-based AI uh, startup founded in 2017, and we got acquired by TD Bank in 2016. After the acquisition, we are still able to keep our Layer 6 brand identity, maintain our startup culture, and also keep operating as an independent AI lab. On the research side, we are working on a lot of uh, fundamental and exciting problems like image retrieval, video understanding, uh, recommender systems, and uh, language modeling. Proudly, our team has been placed highly in various international machine learning competitions. And we also have very solid publications at the top tier AI conferences, like NeurIPS, CVPR, ICCV, and the ECCV. On the banking use case side, since TD has over 25 million customers across North America, we have the access to many unique and massive data sets. This allows us to drive personalization and recommendations for TD Bank and our customers. Being able to see the positive real world impact that machine learning could bring is also a very exciting experience to us. All right, if you, have an, uh, if you are interested in Layer 6 and the work we have done, please come to see me at the networking event after the talks. I'd love to answer any question you have. Uh, but now let's focus on this paper, Guided Similarity Separation for Image Retrieval. It's, a, it's of our honor to be selected to give an oral presentation at New Europe 2019 and here as well. This work is jointly done with uh, uh, Guang, Jason, Himanshu, Jeremy, Satya, and Max. Image retrieval is a task. We are given a query image. The goal is to retrieve all relevant images from a database set. Here, relevant means the images contain the same landmark or objects. As we can see, the variations in uh, view angle, lightning, and occlusions make it very challenging. What makes this even harder is for this problem. Training on the same set of labels of testing set is not allowed. Although it is hard, image retrieval keeps getting more attention in recent years because it plays a crucial role in many applications, uh, including image search engine, 3D reconstruction, medical analysis, and person identification. Thanks to the great success of deep learning, nowadays almost all modern image retrieval systems use pre-trained CNN as feature extractors to generate a fixed dimensional descriptor for every image, and then the retrieval can be done very efficiently by inner product in the descriptor space. However, the CNN model still cannot solve this problem perfectly. Sometimes two relevant images are not visually similar. For example, can you tell these two images are actually the same landmark? I guess the answer probably would be no. But if we take a closer look into the data set, it is not impossible to retrieve the database image for the query because they are connected by a sequence of image where the consecutive images are actually similar. This is what we call data manifold. A lot of efforts have been made to capture manifold information. One of the common ways is to build a KN graph by connecting every image with their top K similar neighbors. Uh, and the pairwise similarity scores are assigned as uh, graph edge weights. After the KN graph is built, the current approaches either traverse the graph or propagate similarity scores to capture the data manifold. Uh, this manifold learning method improves the retrieval performance by a large margin, but they also have their own drawbacks. Typically, this method have a large uh, memory or runtime overhead, and this motivates our work. Uh, our goal here is to design a model that can encode data manifold information into a new descriptor space and preserves the efficient inner product uh, retrieval. Uh, since labeling images for retrieval problem is extremely expensive, so here we only focus on the unsupervised training. Uh, in image retrieval area, uh, the offline stage is where only database images are processed. Uh, we try to make all expensive operations like uh, graph construction and the network training happened in this stage so that in the online stage when a new query comes in, the retrieval and the inference can be done efficiently. Next, I'll quickly go through our model architecture for the offline training. 
uh, we fo following previous work, we first uh, generate, uh, pass all database images through a pre-trained frozen CNNs and generate descriptors. And then a KN graph is built from the descriptors and we feed both the descriptors and the KN graph into a multi-layer graph convolutional network and it generates new descriptors. A new KN graph is built from the new descriptors and we applied a novel guided similarity separation loss to train the model. Back propagation only happened between the GCN model and the GSS loss. Uh, not, uh, and also uh, only GCN layers contain trainable weights. Uh, let's break it into parts and see the details. Graph convolutional network known as GCN was proposed by Keith and Welling in 2016 for graph modeling. For Lth layer of GCN, the HL is the input descriptor from the last layer, and A is the normalized adjacency matrix built from the KN graph. WL and BL are trainable weights and biases terms. After the linearity function is applied, the GCN model generates the new descriptors of the same size. Uh, as we can see, each GCN layer encodes the neighbor information into the new descriptor space. And the more GCN we stack, the higher order of information is encoded uh, into the descriptor. Uh, note that, unlike most of the previous application of GCN, where the graph is given, uh, here we construct the graph from the uh, CN descriptors in an unsupervised fashion. To train the model, uh, a new KN graph is built from the new output descriptor from the GCN, uh, and the uh, and data similarity separation loss is applied on the uh, graph edges, which are pairwise similarity scores, noted as uh, SIJ. Uh, the idea behind this loss is we want to push those images with high similarity scores closer together, and those images with low similarity scores further apart. So we design the loss as a quadratic function where the parameter beta controls the, the threshold that separate the high and low similarity scores. The GSS loss has a linear gradient which has the desired effect that uh, image pairs with high similarity scores get an increasingly large gradient and uh, uh, act as anchors. In this figure, we show how gradient looks like during the training. Uh, here, the y-axis is the loss gradient, and the x-axis shows the similarity scores. Uh, relevant image pairs are shown as orange, and the irrelevant ones are uh, in blue. Before the training, we can see uh, the relevant and the irrelevant data are mixed up in the middle of the plot. As the training starts, GSS se uh, gradually separates the uh, relevant images pairs from the irrelevant ones. More impressively, in the beginning, some image, uh, relevant image pairs have uh, similarity scores lower than threshold beta, which means their gradients are supposed to push their score even lower. However, their similarity scores are actually guided to move up by their uh, relevant uh, uh, neighbors with very strong gradient. That is how we trained our model, and then it comes to uh, the online inference stage. To make it efficient, we uh, cache the uh, database KN graph and the new database uh, descriptors. When new query comes in, we first get it uh, descriptors from the CN model, and uh, uh, then an approximate query graph is built by connecting this query to the pre-computed KN graph. We only keep its first and second orders of neighbors because we believe the data manifold information has been already encoded into the new database descriptors. After we get a new descriptor for the query, the retrieval can still be done efficiently by inner product. Next, I'll show how we modify the KN graph uh, by a technique called the spatial verification. Uh, this gets a stronger result without slowing down the online inference speed. Our model heavily relies on the KN graph generated from the CN descriptors. Uh, a principled way to improve it is to verify its edges. Spatial verification is a commonly used technique for getting a more trustworthy similarity scores for a pair of images. It requires generating uh, local descriptors and matching local regions between them. While it improves the quality of the graph, computationally it is very expensive. 
Since our model is able to encode the graph information into a new descriptor space, so during the offline training stage, we applied spatial verification to verify the edges of the tra uh, training graph and pass it to the GCN to encode the uh, spatial verified graph information into the new descriptors. Uh, to, uh, and this gets us stronger result without adding uh, uh, any run online runtime overhead. Uh, I'll talk about the result later in the experiment section. As another option, we can also verify the query graph uh, to get even stronger result, but it comes with a longer inference time. For quantitatively evaluating our model, we experimented with three data sets. Uh, the revisited Oxford and Paris are the most widely used image retrieval data set. It comes with different settings, where medium setting evaluates both uh, easy and hard cases, but in the hard setting, all relevant images are hard cases. Uh, we also experimented with a large scale data set called the instar -E. It contains objects like buildings, toys, and uh, logos. Achieving good result on this data set shows uh, our model not only works well with landmark data, but also generalizes to other instance level image retrieval data sets. The GEM is one of the leading CM models. Uh, we use the descriptor from the GM as our, the input descriptor for our model and all other baselines to make the comparison fair. These seven rows are currently leading uh, manifold learning method and these are the state of the art method using spatial verification. Our model achieves a new state of the art on all 10 data sets and settings with or without using spatial verification. As I mentioned before, here we are comparing the vanilla GSS and the GSS with the offline training graph verified by spatial verification. The, uh, the improvements are significant uh, and it adds no online runtime overhead. This indicates that our model is actually able to encode the spatial verified graph information into the new descriptors. We also visualize the descriptors in the original space and the new space learned by GSS. Uh, PCA and the UMAP are used to, to visualize them in 2D space. Uh, the color here indicates which landmarks the images are depicting. Uh, as we can see, in the, um, the CM model tends to generate a similar descriptors for visually similar images, even like a, they, they are actually different landmarks. That's why in the original space, different colors are mixed up together. Uh, as we can see, the GSS disentangles clusters from each other and push relevant images closer together. To conclude, uh, we proposed a new unsupervised model for image retrieval that can encode uh, uh, manifold information into a new descriptor space. This model achieves new state-of-the-art result on all data sets with or without using spatial verification. Expensive spatial verification information can also be encoded into the new descriptor space, uh, which boosts the performance even further without hurting the online inference speed. Thanks a lot for listening. I'll take questions related to this paper after the other speakers' talks. Uh, if you have any other questions about Layer 6, let's chat at the networking event afterwards. Thanks a lot.